good morning and welcome. You catch me this morning in the woods again. It's getting quite late in autumn now and as a result a lot of the trees have lost a lot of the leaves. Uh, and I've come out, it's only about half past uh, six in the morning, quarter to seven, and the light's just starting to come up. And I've come to some woods about five miles from the house and uh, there's uh, a particular shot here I took a few months ago and it's also the location that those that follow the channel saw me using um, a leaf blower trying to actually get the leaves up in the air, which didn't work. Uh, but there is a particular part about 300 yards further down this track where the path divides and I'll put the picture up now but this is the picture I took before and I'm having to look down because this is quite heavily churned up now as a result it's a little bit tricky to walk on it's a bit slippery but uh, the picture I took before was taken in foggy conditions and we have foggy conditions again this morning Unfortunately, when I left the house, it was much foggier than it is here, which is often the case because we're only about a mile from the River Medway and probably not very much higher than it is. So we tend to pick up the, the fog in the valley where I live. But here we're about, well, as I say, four or five miles further on. And as a result of that, this area isn't as close to the Medway. Consequently, the fog isn't as obvious. So I'll come out pretty much to see what I can get in foggy conditions again in a different environment than last Sunday when I was up in the woods um, at the top of the hill near Seven Oaks. So let's see how we get on with this. Well I've just been taking some b-roll with this um, 66,000 and I'm very impressed with it, I really am. The ability to pull zoom um, smoothly from one location to another is really really handy. I can't do it on the ZV-1 which I'm talking to you now on. Um, it just doesn't have that capability and the ability to actually uh, automatically zoom in and out smoothly which the ZV-1 can do but not as well as the, um, the 66000 with this lens on. Um, I've, you'll have probably seen by now in the video some of the pulls and pushes and uh, focus pulls that I've done. I'm hoping to actually bring the quality of the video that supports what I'm doing up a bit because I feel that it's been a little bit lacking, it's been a bit amateurish. You might um, agree or disagree, I don't mind, but what I've done is I've just found a shot which I think really works quite well with the small amount of mist we've got. So I'll spin you around and let you have a look at it. Right, what I'm looking at here is this gap in the, uh, the tree, this immediate tree. There's some nice autumnal colour on the branches here and here and then in the distance we've got the pine sticking up with the mist off into the distance. And I think that's making for quite a nice shot. So although I've actually got the 66,000 still on the tripod at the moment, I'm going to switch over and I'll move across to using the, um, the A7 and I'm going to frame that shot up with the 24 to 70 and hopefully what I'm looking at guessing is just sort of a, a window on this tree with this gap into the distance. So let me get set up and I'll talk you through it. I can see behind you guys that there's a bit of light coming into the sky. I think the mist is thin enough that the sun's starting to break through it. I don't know if that'll work for me here but um, let me talk you through the shot that I was setting up. Uh, it's quite pleasing actually, I quite like this so I'll spin you around. And basically what we're looking at here is that image where I've got a little bit of fern in the foreground and I've got the tree that's framing the vertical pines in the distance. And I'll just pull slightly back on that. I'm at 70 mil. I just want the, I want that piece of tree um, that's coming in from the top to actually close the frame off at the top and I've got some nice sort of lines here I've got a nice little bit of a diagonal running across there it's nothing too strong it's not a great shot but I think it works quite well especially with the mist in the background and I've still got the um, soft uh, 0.7 soft edge grad on which is just taking a little bit of the brightness out of the sky here so let me take that shot it's huh, f13 five seconds minus 1.7 compensation ISO 50 and let's if I'm focused on the fern as you can see from the focus point there and I think at F13 that should get everything in no space on memory card oh that's interesting let's just delete some of the older images first time that's happened I'm usually 
I tend to leave all my images on the card until that sort of thing happens but it looks as if I'm going to have to do a bit of proper tidying up now so let's just get rid of a, a dozen or so pictures to buy myself some space sorry about this right going back so let's take that shot now and hopefully it won't complain this time it's not complaining this time five seconds there's not a breath of wind anywhere dogs happily scampering around getting covered in mud um, and if I show you into the distance you might be able to see the light in the sky not sure this camera can pick it up but there's a very subtle yellow glow in the, in the sky over in the southeasterly direction which is that way and it doesn't look as if it's picked it up never mind so there we go that's that shot in the bag I'm not completely convinced about that shot actually if I'm honest um, I'm not sure if it's not too busy I think what I intended probably was more just this section of the frame so I might get a bit closer cut out this foreground element of these ferns and see if I can get a I want the I want it two planes. I want it to be these branches and then the trees in the distance in the fog. And at the moment it's a bit complicated. So let me see if I can set up for a different one. Okay, I moved the camera from where I'm pointing down to much nearer to that fern. And what I've come up with, and I'm doing something I don't normally do in landscape photography. I'm using quite a wide, wide aperture, in this case f4.5. Because what I'm hoping to do is, I've got quite close to the branches, so I want all of these branches and leaves to be in focus sharply. And I want them to be juxtaposed against the grey, sort of uh, foggy background of the ferns in the distance. But to actually get to that, what I'm trying to do is... I've actually got the narrow aperture, sorry, the wider aperture, so that they're thrown out of focus much more. And I think... That actually adds to this picture quite a lot. So that's only an eighth of a second at f4.5. Let me just go to 5.6. That's still well out of focus in the background. I just want to ensure everything in the foreground is in focus. So 50th of a second, uh, sorry, quarter of a second, 5.6 minus 0.7 compensation. Nothing's blown out. Let me wind the compensation until I just get clipping, which is there. And Let's take that shot. That's the picture, but this vlogging camera is sitting at 2.5 aperture, so you're pretty much getting the same idea, but what I've framed is more that on the actual A7R4. So let's take that shot. I'm focused on the leaves in the foreground. I'll actually pick that set because they're brighter. I'll probably get a better focus lock on those. Yep, that's good. Third of a second, f5.6. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, time for the final shot of this little shoot before scampering off home and uh, day's work and then put the video together hopefully this evening, all being well. Um, just behind where you were and where I am pointing the opposite way to now behind me there notice the coloring on that little bush I'm not sure what that is uh, my maybe it's a small beech tree growing I don't know but uh, perhaps but leave a comment in the section below if you know better but what's nice about it is the the yellow coloring against the bluey hazy background of the uh, the conifers in the distance so I'm going to set up for that um, I'll take the I've got the vlogging camera still on here at the moment and I've been doing a few pushes and pulls and focus pulls and things um, on various bits to add some more b-roll to this hopefully you guys are enjoying the b-roll if you do please comment below uh, I, I do appreciate getting feedback from people and recently I've been getting more and more feedback partly because I've been asking for it so I'm asking for more please give me more feedback I'm only really doing this I'm, well I'm doing this because I like doing it um, I enjoy the process of putting all this together I enjoy the photography that's involved in it and I enjoy the videography and I also enjoy passing across what few words of wisdom I might be able to impart on other people uh, and what thought processes I have when I actually go to produce images uh, so anyway I'm going to set up with the other camera and uh, try and frame that nice little bit of tree against the misty distance and see how we get on. It's 
see this is pretty much what I was talking about with this um, camera uh, it's a fixed f4 focal length uh, sorry fixed f4 aperture uh, variable focal length what 18 to 110 and I'm zoomed right in on this little cobweb here that's dangling in the wind and it's quite happily sitting there perfectly focused now if I start recording on that camera and just very very gently press the zoom ring button you see how smoothly that's now zooming out and it's maintaining perfect focus on that actual cobweb most cameras find it very difficult to actually maintain focus without focus breathing and other problems while zooming this one doesn't so that's one of the advantages Oh, this is pretty yucky, messy, sticky. Horses have churned this up quite a bit and it makes it really quite difficult to walk in. I do wish I'd put the Wellingtons on today. Oh well, too late. I have to get back, wash the shoes under the tap. In the outstairs, out, outdoors. Oh dear. I sometimes ask myself why I do this vlogging nonsense. Um, as I said earlier, or at least mentioned, I do it because I like to do it. Uh, it gives me a reason to get out, gives me a reason to bring out the camera, gives me a reason to take pictures, gives me a reason to play with software that pulls all of that together, which is quite an enjoyable and creative process. But at the end of the day, it's only any good if anyone wants to watch them. And uh, that's you guys, basically. So the more feedback, the more thumbs up and things that I get, or direction if you actually feel it's not going in a direction you want it to go or think I should be going um, you're welcome to comment um, I might not take any notice but you're welcome to comment and I appreciate the comments at least all the ones that are, are kind or well-meaning even if they're actually in some way critical I don't want comments coming back of the sort I've had in the past a couple of times where I've actually had to seriously admonish someone for getting something completely wrong and basically none of their business. I did have one guy at one point criticising me for actually having so much camera equipment. He used the term must have more uh, money than sense and I think that's inappropriate. I don't question whether he plays golf. I don't question whether he actually spends his money on holidays in expensive locations. So why should that give him the right to actually make any comment about what I do with my money in terms of my photographic equipment? Anyway, no ranting. It's not political. See you on the next video.